work it, make it, do it, makes us. Well, first of all, thanks everybody for giving up 15 minutes of your, your lunch hour to come to this session. I really appreciate it. Um, and it is 15 minutes, so I'm going to be really quick, but hopefully give you something really exciting to go away with. And um, I'll actually be down at the Oracle stand afterwards if you want to have a chat about this. So, really quick introduction. Uh, Grant Ronald and I, we, um, I work in the, the product management team, uh, responsible for our mobile and intelligent bots, okay? So, that's the slides over with, okay? What I want to do now is just show you some of the cool stuff that we are doing uh, with bots. Now, I'm going to show you some product and stuff that we're working on, so Oracle always likes me to put this slide up. So, the first thing I'm going to do is um, look at why bots might be interesting chatbots. Well, again, the time being short, I don't want to spend too long extolling the virtues of um, messaging apps and stuff, but let's just acknowledge that we have like a couple of billion people on the, the, the planet who are communicating with each other through messaging apps like Facebook or Slack or HipChat, WeChat, all those kind of things. So wouldn't it make sense or wouldn't it be nice that as well as just communicating and chatting to our friends, we could also maybe chat to business or services, you know, order pizza, check our bank balance, check the, uh, the results of our, our exams or something. Interacting through natural conversation rather than trying to find a website or downloading a mobile app or something. So let me start by showing you an example. And here's something I've been playing about with just to get you into the mood of what uh, a chatbot uh, does. So let's imagine here, um, I want to do some banking on the chatbot here. So let's uh, ask it a question. So what is my balance? OK. So I've asked that question, what's that, my balance? But it's, it's like an incomplete question. Well, what account are you talking about? OK, we can uh, in my savings account. So check my savings account. And there, you're balancing your savings. So it's got a back-end system, and it's pulled up some information. Now, obviously, there is a million and one different ways I could ask that same question. So I didn't put savings in, but I might put um, what's my balance in savings. So actually specify the full amount of information that we need to actually retrieve. And we get that back as well. And I can ask that in different ways. Uh, how much do I have in savings? So another way of answering question, asking the same question. So essentially, we've got three, four, hundreds of different ways of asking that same question. Um, and it's going to still resolve the fact that, well, even though you can ask this in many different ways, I will resolve that to meaning the same thing. You have the same intention, which is checking a balance. So let's try something else now, because having checked my balance, I want to go out tonight, or I've been out last night, and I need to pay the babysitter. So let's say pay the babysitter. So here's a different thing this chatbot's going to do. So I'm asking it to pay the babysitter. And again, I've asked it a question, but not given it enough information to resolve or answer the question for me. So it says, well, wait a minute. Um, what account do you want to make the payment from? OK, so my, my checking account. Um, and it'll come back and say, OK, checking how much? Now, all conversations don't necessarily follow an exact flow. At this point, I might think, well, wait a minute, how much money have I got before I pay? So how much do I have in So ask the question, how much do I have? Now, notice that it's remembered that I'm talking about the checking account. So it's not said, well, what account do you want to know? So I've kind of injected a separate conversation into this pay the babysitter conversation, yet it's remembering what we're talking about, which is kind of like what you'd expect when you're talking to, to, to somebody. OK, so the balance in your check. OK, I've got loads of money. I should have spent more money last night. So let's say pay. And then we'll finish the conversation. How much do you want to pay? Um, because I work for uh, a US company, then I've got to stick it in, in dollars here, just because that's how we built the demo. 
okay, what's the payment amount of $50? And there we go, we'll get the full, your payment of $50 is made to the babysitter that I talked about earlier from your checking account that we talked about earlier, and it's gone to some back-end system and it's done that transaction for me, okay? So that's the, the, the I suppose, the sum of what this chatbot is doing. It's a banking chatbot. How do we build that? And this is the really interesting thing about how we build these chatbots. So this is our uh, intelligent bot service, okay, part of our mobile cloud service. And what it does is allows you to define the things that you'd like the bot to do, make connections to back-end systems to do those things, but also provides AI and a natural language processing engine so that understands the million and one different ways you could ask how much money have I got or pay somebody. So let me take a step through here. We've got a number of bots and we could, you know, I might envisage myself having uh, a, a master bot that controls the first line of kind of communication and then depending on what the questions ask, we pass you off to the banking bot or we pass you off to the password reset bot or we send you off to somewhere else that has to you know, get a, a, an engineer to come and visit, whatever the use case might be. So let's look at my master bot. Now, the first thing to make clear here is the chat bot that I just showed you, it wasn't an all-encompassing conversation, okay? It was a limited scope, and that's exactly what the chat bot should be. I'm not gonna sit down with that banking chat bot and have a philosophical discussion about you know, the life universe and everything, okay? It's there to do a set number of things, okay? And in this example here, for the sake of the demo, I've kept it that this thing really does three use cases. And you can gracefully handle, if you do ask it something philosophical, how the response there. But essentially, there are three things that this banking bot will do. It will check for balances, it will transfer money, and it will tell you what you've been spending your, your things on, your money on. So, if I say, well, my banking bot, I would like it to cope with or manage the fact that you can ask for balances. What we do is we say, okay, I'm gonna create an intent. So an intent is the thing the, the bot will actually do or respond to or a use case. And what I do is I seed it with about half a dozen or a dozen of sample phrases. Now, to be clear, this isn't a rule-based check, okay? If I ask a question which is not covered in there, that would be pretty limiting, okay? So we're not trying to ensure that we cover every single example of the way that somebody could ask how to, uh, how their, what their balance is. What we're just doing is creating a couple of represented phrases. And what we do is we actually then train the bot and it will take those phrases and put it into some neural network which will then understand that if I ask a question which is not one of my samples, which is highly likely, then it gives a probability that, well, do you know what, with the words you've used in this input and the couple of training sentences you've given me, I have a 98% probability that you're asking about a balance, okay? And I can actually test this here in the, the, the tester. So, um, so how much, or we asked before, what is my balance? It's saying, well, there's an 82% chance that you're talking about balances. Or I could ask, um, how much do I have in my savings account? And again, it's resolving, saying, based on these phrases, we've got a rough idea that 98%, 93% probability. However, there's actually two stages that our bot service gives you in processing that language. The first is, it just checks the input phrase against the trained neural network based on those phrases and gives a probability. But it really doesn't know anything about language as, stu as such at this point is just using these sentences as really tokens, okay? A frequency of words that appear. But it then goes through a second stage, and this is a called NLP or natural language processing. 
so that with the natural language processing, it has been specifically trained in, for example, in this case, English, using a huge body or corpus of data, including things like Wikipedia, that will then start understanding the subtleties and nuances for language, okay? So for example, if my bot was for uh, phoning up my phone company to tell them of problems with my, my um, phone line, if I said something like, my phone is bust, okay? Now, bust is a bit of a slang term, but having been trained in a whole body of public available information, it would understand that, well, bust, although it can mean many things, it can mean as in a drug bust, it can mean as in a torso or a statue, well, in the context of telephone and fixing things, bust probably means broken and it will lend itself to giving a higher degree of probability to your reporting that something's broken. Okay, so there's a two-stage process going on here based on some sample phrases we give it and the natural language. And that's all we have to do, okay? Because really, the level of natural language processing here is just to work out what intent we go to. And based on that intent, we can define what, for example, back-end system that we call to actually get a balance. Now, when I showed you the example uh, with how much is my, or how much do I have in uh, my savings account, I could have put in savings or checking account or credit card. So the intent has a variable element to it. And so what we can also do in our bot service is define the variable elements of an intent and get them to be specifically picked out of the natural language. So in this example here, you can see that the balances intent will also look for something called an account type. And an account type, if I look here, is a list of the possible banking uh, or, or, or uh, accounts that I have with a bunch of synonyms associated with it as well. And you'll actually see this in the tester that if I say, uh, let's clear this, uh, how much in savings, oh, sorry. what's my balance in savings, you'll see that it's actually worked out, it's pulled out of that sentence, the fact that you're talking about the savings account and assign that value to this variable account type, okay? So similarly, if I did Amex, it would say, well, you're talking about credit card, okay? So it's pulling out the variable elements. So you can define domain-specific entities or variables, so like account type, or if I was doing a pizza bot, I might create a, a variable called pizza size, okay? So it would specifically look for, in your sentence, if you type in, I want to order a large pizza, it would pick out large. But we could also associate synonyms with large, so if it was a 14-inch pizza or huge pizza or whatever the different words we could pick those out and resolve those back to a specific, domain-specific piece of information such as large pizza. Now, there are also a number of common elements that you might want to pick out, and these include things like dates, currency, phone numbers, times, okay? So we also provide a whole lot of pre-built uh, entities or variables that we'll look for and pull out of the sentence. So again, in the way of an example, let's say, uh, how much did I spend last week? So that's resolved to the track spending intent. So it knows you're talking about that, that piece of that intent or that use case. But notice that it's also picked out last week, it's resolved as well being from the 30th of April to the 7th of May, okay? So you don't have to put it in machine-specific format. We're talking in a natural language, and it will work out, well, if you say last week, or equally if you say last month, it will pick out the correct 
and resolve that to uh, something that, that your back-end system will start to understand, whether that's a SQL query or, or something else you have at your back-end. Right, time is short, moving on really quickly. So the last thing to show is, well, a conversation happens and a conversation has a flow. So I'm going to show you, this is actually one of our pre-production builds. So this is actually, we, we're working on a visual designer for this, but this is what you see under the covers that basically on asking a question, okay, the flow will say, right, I will get the input from you as long as it's greater than 40% probability we will then jump to the correct point in the conversation. So for example, if we work out the U of Asked start balances, then what we'll do then is we'll set the value of the account type. And if you've not entered account type, we'll stick up uh, a list component in which you can select one of the account types. And then once we have all the information, we will actually call something called balance retrieval. And balance retrieval is actually just a REST web service that will go back and do the right thing. Okay, 15 minutes, geez, that goes quickly. Um, what I'm gonna do is just point you to, if you'd like to learn more, we're gonna be down at the Oracle stand, just down there as well. I'll be down there if you wanna have a chat about this, or you can follow us on uh, Twitter. I got my handle here, uh, GW Ronald. So thank you very much for attending this session, giving up your lunch. Any questions, please come and see me. Thank you.